as far as the show, you're going to see, though, you know, Tip Roy through some things with Deja. That is, you know, the biggest, you know, one of the biggest things that we had to deal with this season. Peace world. Welcome or welcome back. I'm Goddess Dawn, the queen of info. And I'm here today to share something I came across. Tiny of Tiny NTI doing an interview with Entertainment Tonight. It looks like it was published about nine months ago and that it's a promo for their reality show. And I put that in air quotes, um, T.I. and Tiny's Friends and Family Hustle. In light of the serious allegations the couple is currently facing, what she says in this interview takes on a different look today. So let's listen to this together. Because it was, you know, um, yeah, one of my kids, so it was a big deal. Tamika Tiny Harris is keeping it real about her famous family, specifically her husband T.I. and his 18-year-old daughter Deja, after the rapper made these comments on the Ladies Like Us podcast in November. I say, look, dog, <laughs> she'll ride no horses, she'll ride no bikes, <laughs> she'll play no sports, man. Just check the hymen, please. <laughs> Give me back my results. Oh, Expeditiously. <laughs> <No>. Expeditiously. <laughs> but I will, you know, I will say as of my 18th birthday, Hyman is still. Oh, how is their relationship today? Their relationship is definitely much better now because, you know, Deja is, she's a very, she's a very bright girl, very smart girl. And um, her dad just wants to love on her. So, you know, anytime he's around her, he just can't stop loving on her. So she can't. Okay, so I'm sure you all remember the Hyman conversation that took place sometime last year. He was not even on his own podcast. I don't even know if he had his own podcast at the time, but he was on the podcast and he brought up his daughter having annual Hyman checks. And that was just the most inappropriate, just disturbing thing I've heard from him to date, I think. But this um, controversy played out in their reality show. And this is what she's talking about. And as you hear, she said that um, T.I. likes to just love on Deja, just love on Deja. Let's finish listening. You know, it's like, what, what am I fighting here? You know, so um, they've been doing really good. But we haven't been able to see her because she's been really quarantining. We've seen. So they haven't seen Deja because she's been quarantining. But I think there's probably more to why they haven't seen Deja as much. Seen all the kids really, but her only but once or twice. So they've seen all the kids, she says, but except for Deja, only once or twice they, they've seen her during the pandemic. That says a lot. It's a very personal decision to allow the cameras to capture a really tough moment or a conversation like that one. Did T.I. Or, or Deja, did they have any pushback? Like, I don't want to show this on the show. If it's a story that's going around the world, like, to me, I feel like for us, it's better for us to show it and let you see it, see it hear it from us than someone else give it to you. Because the way they're going to give they have the least amount of information. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't know they wasn't here. So I don't, I would prefer you to get it from us. You heard it from her. She prefers that we get the information about her family from them. So the show is a vehicle for them to pretty much explain different things and showcase themselves in the light that they feel is best for the family. However, with the situation currently with the allegations of sex trafficking, drugging, even with underage um, girls in the conversation, very serious allegations, the filming for their reality show has been suspended. And in the the statement that was made from the network, they said that they talked to law enforcement and other people before making their decision, and they decided to suspend things, which says that there is some seriousness to everything that's going on. We already know, too, that 
some of the accusers have lawyered up and um, lawyers aren't generally going to take the case unless they see light at the end of the tunnel, right? And whether that is a monetary payoff, the lawyer is typically not going to go into a case that they don't think they're going to win. You know, and that's how we deal with it. You know, look at it like this is something that is our issue. It's about us and they should know it from us and they should know the real way and the real reason. And, and that's just the way we, we like it. We like well, um, with that being said, we invite you, Tiny, to give us the real reason in the real way and go on your Instagram live. Do it on YouTube. You don't have to rely on your show for um, a vehicle because you have direct connection to your fans, direct connection to the public via your other platform. So I would say you guys sit down as a family or as a couple and address it. But if it's too serious because everybody's lawyered up and you probably have also, definitely let the lawyers handle things accordingly. Like to boy, it's better that way. What steps did they have to take to really get to the place that they're at today and overcome those hard moments? There's a lot of conversation, a lot of, you know, a lot of talking, a lot of back and forth trying to, you know, figure out how, um, you know, where, where the biggest problem was and understanding, you know, how she feels and, you know, and where he was coming from and why he made those things and, you know, what he actually meant by whatever he said. There was no malicious ill and intent in, in what he was, you know, or his reason for speaking on it. So, you know, once, you know, understanding that and you know, her knowing that, you know, I felt like that was a, a, a bridge to help, you know, um, bridge the gap, uh, you know, something to help bridge the gap. She said there's no ill will. There was no ill will meant by T.I. when he, he made the comments about Deja's hymen checks. But um, as I mentioned before in a previous video or live, I feel that it could have been him announcing her virginity for the purpose of controlling her narrative, the highest bidder. Maybe it was a ritualistic thing. You know, the industry is full of rituals and sometimes sacrifices are made in order to keep people at the top, keep people thriving in the business. So I wouldn't overlook that when it comes to this situation. Also on the show, Tiny says we'll continue seeing more personal glimpses into her nearly 10 year long marriage to T.I. Tim and I have had our ups and downs, but we're finally in a great place together. Well, I guess nine months ago when this was published, that was the case. We know that is not the case today. And I just feel that Tiny, unfortunately, is now in a position where standing by your man went too far. Marriage with T.I., it's something that people look at as aspirational because you can go through the peaks and the valleys and you can come out on top. So what are we going to see in terms of your relationship and, and maybe the good times, but also the struggles that you guys go through? Yeah. Um, well, I think, you know, this season for us, as far as a relationship, as far as I can remember in this season, everything was really pretty good. You know, so it was probably some of our best times. And, you know, even with our, um, our fam crew, they was like, wow, like, this has been amazing. Wow. Like, you guys haven't been fussing. And, you know, we've been like really on one accord. And They've been on the same accord probably because they have been living it up with their partying and their threesomes and their orgies. But um, again, probably not the case today. Very loving and trying to work with each other. I'm not saying we don't have spats here and there, you know, but of course we it's been like a real close-knit fun, like uh like we back in love like old time when we first got together. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that is, you know, really good because we've been able to find ourselves back into that to that place. And I think that's a, a, a very hard thing to do. It's like fresh new love. Well, we uh, we put it together like very last minute because I didn't feel like we was gonna be able to do anything. She had one of her besties come over, which is my niece, uh, Bella, and then, then 
uh, Lele surprised her. You know, the artist Lele, she surprised yeah. her. She came over and she spent the night with us. So, um, um, Lele's parents probably should have thought twice before letting her spend the night at TI and Tiny's. I'm just saying. But she said she surprised them. Um, she surprised Eris, which I'm sure she was super excited. And they had a sleepover. Well, with like I said, with these allegations, people are going to be probably be letting their kids sleep over at Ti and Tiny's house anytime soon. We actually had a fun time. We put like a little painting. They was doing like a sip and paint. They had like apple cider, um, oh. um, and so they. Was so the kids had a sip and paint. Instead of champagne, they had apple cider. But see, she's already setting them up for that scenario to be drinking and whatnot. Did they have fake pills too, Tiny? Painting, and she had like three cakes at the last minute. She had three nice, beautiful cakes. We had a chef come over and cook, and uh, we enjoyed it. She enjoyed it, rather. And we couldn't chat with Tiny without asking about the mass Singer. Fans are convinced the Night Angel is none other than Tiny's escape bandmate, Candy Burris. I want to know, are you watching the mass Singer? We're all convinced it's your girl Candy as the Night Angel. Right? Oh, really? Well, I have been watching it. And whoever the Night Angel is, she is jamming. She is letting them people have it, okay? Listen, you know her voice better than anyone's. Do you think it sounds like Candy? I, I mean, you know, I, I think it's a disguise. I don't think you're supposed to. I don't think she's supposed to be sounding like Candy. So it could be somebody trying to sound like Candy and changing up their voice. You know what I'm saying? Mm. We're pretty convinced it's your girl Candy. Oh, yeah? Yes. Would you? Speaking of Candy, her name has come up in this also. And I don't think that's somewhere she wants to be. Ever do that show? I would do it. I, I think it's, I th I, I, I'm just not getting into it since, um, you know, this last season. But uh, yeah, I love the show. I definitely would do it. I think you'd be amazing. Yeah. I'm definitely keeping my eyes and ears open when it comes to this situation. This is the year of more explosive exposure than we've seen before. So it's not a surprise that this is happening. The question is, who's next? Who else will be exposed here? How big is it? How far does it reach? I know Tiny's buddy Candy, again, her name has come up because of her reputation as a quote unquote freak. Her sex dungeon in her house has come up in many conversations on Real Housewives of Atlanta. And let's not forget when Portia accused Candy and them, in quotes, Candy and them on plotting to drug at her. Ciao. I'm going to leave it here. Like, share, subscribe, and comment. Let me know your thoughts. Till next time. Peace.